Welcome to Ms. Lip Art. Today, you're going to learn how to draw an ice cream cone inspired by artist Wayne Thiebaud. Wayne Thiebaud lived to be 101 years old. Not only was he an artist, but he also taught art to many people. He made paintings of cakes that looked real, like you could take your finger and taste it. Today, we're going to be making one that for you. You can decide what color ice cream you want, what kind of background you want, and if you want a cherry on top. The materials you'll need are simple. You can get these Sargent Art chalk pastels. You'll also need lots of baby wipes, a paper towel, and some fixative. I'm going to be using 9x12 brown construction paper. You'll also need right close to you a paper towel and of course your wipes so they're easy to get to. You're going to be using these a lot because using chalk pastels is messy. When you open your box it might look new like this but sometimes they're broken and that's okay. Don't worry about that. It's time to roll up your sleeves because this project is messy. You might also want to wear a paint shirt to protect your clothes. We're going to be starting at the top and then the middle and then the bottom for the cone. We're going to make a double decker ice cream cone. So the first thing you need to do is decide what flavor of ice cream. I've decided I'm going to have pink bubblegum ice cream on the top, but you can have green or blue or whatever color you want. We're going to make a circle about the size of a tennis ball on our paper. If you make a mistake, now is the time to fix it. You can round it out just like this. Now it's time to fill in our ice cream. Chalk pastels are a very gentle process. You don't need to push too hard. And when we rub it in, all of those gaps will go away. But if you have some dust on the top, it's not a good idea to brush it away because you can smear it like that. See? The best thing to do is to lift it up on its side, tap it three times, and your dust chalk goes right down on the table. Now it's time to rub it in. I only use one finger per color. That way I don't get the colors mixed up. I'm stroking very gently as if I was petting a tiny kitten. There! And you can rub it off just a little bit on the side. It's time to pick the flavor of your second scoop. What will it be? Mint? Blueberry? Grape? Mine's going to be blue. Mmm, I think it's blueberry. And I'm going to draw half a circle around so that the top scoop looks like it's on top of the bottom scoop. I'm going to draw a line right here to make it easier for me to fill it in. And you can see I'm also using very gentle, gentle strokes. Time to tap. One, two, three. And smooth it in with a different finger. If you don't use a different finger, the colors will mix. And if you don't want that to happen, you need to use a different finger. There I am, gently petting that little kitty cat. When I mix the colors together, it looks like a little shadow. Now it's time to make the cone. I'm gonna make a pointed waffle cone. And now you can decide what color your cone is gonna be. I'm going to pick kind of a light brown and make a point like this, right under my ice cream and fill it in like I have with the two ice cream scoops on top. You can see I'm going slowly and carefully. Whoops, I made a mistake. That's easy to take care of. Just rub it into the paper with your finger and when you do your background, it'll disappear. Time to tap that extra off, one, two, three. Hmm, 
It's time to rub it in. Which finger should I use? I can't use the pink or blue one. I think I'll use my fourth finger. But you can use your pinky if that's easier for you. I have the three finger rule with pastels. Once the three are full, then I can clean if I want to change colors. The best way of cleaning is to get your wipe, put your finger in and twist it around. Wipe it on your paper towel to make now sure it's make clean. Now we're going to make ice cream look real by adding light on one side and shadow on the other. I'm going to use white on the left and I'm going to use a darker color on the right. Hmm, pink is made of red, but I think purple is darker and it's close to red. So I'm going to use purple for the shadow. Take your white on the flat side and draw around the left side following the circular shape. If you get pink on it, just wipe it off on your paper towel to keep it clean. You're going to do the same thing on the other side with your shadow color. Don't worry how it looks now because we're going to rub that in and make it look so real that you just want to take a bite of that ice cream. Rub it really good. See how carefully I'm going around and around and I'm even bringing some into the middle a little bit to create that shadow. There, does that look real? The shadow for blue, hmm, I have dark blue and indigo. I'm gonna use the dark blue because I think that'll look the best. Again, we're going to use our white following the curve of your ice cream. And wipe it off if it gets on there. And the same for the shadow on the other side. If you used your first finger for the pink, use a different finger to blend in the white. You can use the same finger over on your shadow. I find it's a good idea to blend in the white first. That way it doesn't get too dark. What about this ice cream cone right down here at the bottom? I think I will use a light tan. And I'm going to use a dark brown for the shadow. Yes, I'm happy with that. Using the flat end again, follow the line and shape of your cone. And the same on the shadow side. And you might want to add a little bit underneath so you can have a shadow under there. And use a different finger to blend this in. I always blend in the light color first and then the dark color, or you can switch with pinky like I did. You can see I went over a little bit, and so I'm just erasing it with the side of my hand. Blending it just a little bit more until it's just the way I want it. There, I think we're ready. It's cherry time. Get out your red. We're going to draw a cherry that overlaps your top scoop of ice cream. It's pretty easy to make a cherry. You can make a circle. If you want to make it look realistic, you could give it a little bit of shape on the top. Purple for the shadow on the right side. I'm going to be adding a highlight this time for the other side. A highlight is a shine mark because cherries are shiny. Take your white. You can use the tip. Push down and flick. Push down and flick. Give it a try. Here we go. You can see my first one was lighter. So I'm adding a few more, but don't add too many. I would not blend that in because it won't be shiny enough. And I'm going to wait to do the stem after I do the background. How many of you like sprinkles on your ice cream? I do! 
it's a good idea to add sprinkles that will show up. So I'm going to do pink on the blue and blue on the pink. And I also have some green. Oh, let's have purple. I like that dark contrast on there. You could also add white or whatever colors you wish. There, that looks good enough to eat, don't you think? Time to make the lines on the comb. I'm going to use dark brown because it's a light brown comb. You can use a lighter color if you have a dark brown comb. Start with diagonal stripes one way and then switch to the opposite, just like a tic-tac-toe. There, doesn't that look delicious? Before we do any further, we're going to spray it with a final fixative. You only have to spray the part of the comb, but it's toxic, so make sure that you spray outside and have an adult do it. Time for the background. Don't use the same colors you use for your ice cream. Try to think of something different or opposite that would be bright and make your picture stand out. How about green? There's green in the sprinkles, that might work. Or maybe yellow. I don't have any yellow, but that looks really good next to them. Purple? Mm, okay, but too dark. What about orange? Yes. There's even some orange sprinkles in there. That's the one I'm going to use. Using the side of your pastel, you're going to rub the background. Rub close to your ice cream, but not right up next to it. You can always move the chalk close to it when you're spreading it with your finger and blending things in. Move it around upside down so that you don't smudge the sides that you've colored. This is in fast motion. If it's too big, break it. That might make it easier for smaller hands to do. Go over a little extra to make sure your colors are going to be nice and deep. Time to rub in. Starting at the top, going to rub carefully around, right next to it, but not into it. Again, this is fast motion. I am using gentle kitty cat strokes. Now I'm going to go to the other side. It's time to turn it around so that I don't make a mess and smear my colors. There. Oh, I like how that is. Just making sure everything's the way I want it. But I think I'll add some shadow on it. I'm going to use a darker shade of my orange. And just rubbing it in, not all the way. Oh, I like that very much. Now that I'm happy. It's time for our last step. We're going to be spraying it with fixative. Don't forget to spray it on the back because you have lots of chalk back there from your tapping. Make sure that you leave it outside until it's dry. If you'd like to put a stem on top, do it before you spray. Or if you forget, just spray a little extra on the top. Otherwise, your cherry can be plain. You can make it your way. Whether you want to make chocolate ice cream, raspberry ice cream, lemon ice cream, rainbow sherbet, whatever kind of ice cream you want. It can even be neon ice cream. Make it your way. Thank you, Mr. Tebow, for inspiring us to make these delicious ice cream cones. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe to Ms. Lip Art. See you next time.